With breakout roles in films like Lady Bird and Call Me By Your Name, few young actors have achieved as quick of a level of critical acclaim as Timothy Chalamet has. He continues to make really interesting career choices, and I absolutely cannot wait to see him in Denis Villeneuve's Dune out in about a month or so. I'll be honest with you, I thought Timothy Chalamet was French uh, just from the, how his name sounded. But uh, as it turns out, he is half French. His father's family is French, but he was born and raised in Manhattan and did spend a lot of summers in France where his paternal grandparents lived. But we're not here to talk about his father's family, oh no. It's on his mother's side that he has Jewish ancestry. And I'm really excited to talk about this one because I don't think Timothy Chalamet is an actor that a lot of people would have guessed had Jewish heritage. I'm Yona Paley and I believe genealogy is fun. And on today's episode, we'll be taking a look at Timothy Chalamet's direct matrilineal line and tracing it back as far as we can. and grew up in the federally subsidized apartment complex called Manhattan Plaza. His parents are Mark Chalamet and Nicole Flender. Nicole is a former dance teacher turned real estate broker. And here's a little fun fact for you, is that Nicole has a brother named Rodman Flender, who uh, is a movie director who savvy movie people might know as the director of the critically maligned movie Leprechaun 2. Rodman and his sister are the children of Harold Flender and Enid Rodman. Enid, who is 94 years old, was a former Broadway dancer uh, who performed in a musical called Make Mine Manhattan. So that makes actually three generations so far of performers in uh, Timothy Chalamet's direct uh, matrilineal ancestry. Enid is the daughter of Philip Rodman and Rose Levine. According to the 1924 marriage certificate, it indicates that they both came from Minsk, Belarus. And whether they were from the actual city of Minsk or the region and a smaller village in that region uh, is uncertain, but uh, all the documentation seems to consistently point to Minsk. It didn't take very long to find Rose in the 1910 U.S. federal census, where she's living with her parents and some of her siblings. Uh, and through this record, along with some other ones, for instance, a marriage record of her brother, Barney Levine, I was able to discover that the name of their parents was Julius Levine and Esther Yerusalimsky. Julius and Esther are buried at Mount Judah Cemetery in New York, and through taking a look at the Mount Judah Cemetery website, it turns out that they were interred in a section of the cemetery called Talmud Torah Teferis Jerusalem. It's one of the oldest yeshivas in New York City and was later led by a very famous Orthodox rabbi named Moshe Feinstein. And what this indicates to me, seeing as the family was associated with this yeshiva, is that they were probably very devout and even after immigrating to the United States, uh, retained a great deal of uh, religiosity, which was not always so common among uh, immigrant families. So we have the names of Timothy Chalamet's great-great-grandparents, uh, but it doesn't end there, because by finding Esther's death record, I was able to take us back one further generation and learn what her parents' names were. Esther Yerusalemsky's parents were William Yerusalemsky and Minnie Aboransky, or maybe Aboramsky. And my guess is that William is an anglicized um, attempt at a name like Wolf, and that Minnie is probably Minna. Uh, and you'll see this a lot with immigrants to the United States is um, if the parents didn't immigrate, they'll still give them like a very American sounding name. So 
I mean, if her father was named Wolf, uh, she would just put William down, even though that he never went by that name ever. Um, and the same with Minnie and Minna, which is a little bit of a closer name, but you get the point. Without any further records, it's uncertain exactly where they lived, uh, but it seems to have been somewhere in the region of Minsk or somewhere in Belarus. And in fact, a quick search of Jewish Gen indicated that there are actually a lot of families with the last name Yerusalemsky. It's a way more common surname than I think I would have ever expected. And that wraps up this video. If you liked it, please be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the YouTube channel. As always, I'm looking forward to bringing you more videos about famous Jews, as well as tips and tricks that you can use in your own genealogy research. So thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.